Let's get her going. It's a real Kipper and Bourne show. Nick Kiprios, Justin Bourne, Derek Brandale, James Wilson. Wilson. Wilson! Is it? And let's welcome back in to the program our very own Sammy McKee. Testing. Testing. <clears throat> you good? Sound okay? Sound all right? You good? Yeah, boys, I'm here. You know... It is something that the last time we saw Sammy, he was fine. Yeah. And today he's fine. But the first day of the Masters, uh, yeah. he was yeah. very yeah. not know. fine. And for the Listen, record, I did the hit with the morning show voice today, and I was like, it's pretty tough for me to say this one. <laughs> JB thought you were faking. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> well, the way you know that I not wasn't faking is that I canceled the tea time on Wednesday. I was so sick. So that is a, if you're going with the, the smoking gun. I mean, that is the proof in the pudding. I was got through. I don't know what it was, but I was as sick as I've been in 10 years for 48 hours. We're happy to have you back. So I'm happy I'm back. Glad you're right. uh, I'm enjoying the Masters. I'm enjoying seeing you two. Didn't enjoy the Leaf game a whole lot last night, but no. we move on. Well, wherever you're watching, wherever you're listening, Sportsnet 590, Sportsnet 360, Sportsnet Plus from 4 to 6. Uh, we're glad you're with us for the next two hours on this Friday. Final Friday of the regular season. Yeah. Week yeah. to week to uh today we're teeing up a playoff game. We boys. are. Oh my god. I can't believe we're here. We Thank are. God. We are. And just remember it's Friday, so text us at 59590, yes. especially on Friday where we typically run out of gas and your texts actually save our show. You got to keep us afloat. Because otherwise we'll be very distractible today, and we will talk golf if you let us. Oh, so. no, we can't do golf. I, there's nothing that gets people more bent out of shape than golf. Buddy, this is golf or hockey audience. It's It's got to have a lot heavy golf overlap, does it not? A little bit. Yeah. A little love for Tiger making the cut for the 24th consecutive time. 24th the consecutive record. time. Set the record today past uh, Freddie Couples. And, I mean, he looks like he needs a wheelbarrow to get around out there. Oh, yeah. He's just, like... It's like he's in, um, like, a Halloween costume or something, right? Where you're, like, <laughs> you're Not stiff, as mobile right? as you should be. Yeah, he looks like me in my robot costume. <laughs> yeah, were, yeah, exactly. And he's getting it around Augusta. He's uh, hanging in there. He is. I just, like, you know, I'm a diehard Tiger fan. All of us are big Tiger fans, but he's probably my favorite athlete of all time. And... I guard against this every year where I'm like, he's done. Yeah. I don't even like this. I don't even want to watch it. I do that you should play. Every tournament I do that because I want to guard against the horrible yeah. other side. Okay, but. It's like me being like, they got no chance so against he the looked, Panthers. He, he, he physically looked so much better yesterday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he walks around like he's wearing a Halloween costume. <laughs> yes. How is he ever going to once again put four great days together? I don't know that he ever will again. He probably won't, but put up a couple early birdies tomorrow, boys, and let's get nuts. How He's much, only eight back. How much Aleve are you allowed to <laughs> oh, yeah. ingest? What's, what's the maximum Buddy, dosage? That, that guy's uh, physiotherapist is making his money oh. tonight and tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Well, we got uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs with still three games to go. Last night, losers to the New Jersey Devils, a game that uh, JB and I worked for Sportsnet Ontario. So uh, plenty to dissect, but at the end of the day, nobody cares because Austin scored two more, mm. closing in on 70. And people like Sammy, that's all they care about it's the, now. Uh, it's the great scene from The Simpsons with Mark McGuire and it's something like the CIA. And he's like, do you want to know the horrible truth? Or do you want to see me hit dingers? And everyone's like, dingers! <laughs> Honestly, Marty? Perfect. Perfect. It's like, we don't really care what else that meant. Tell us about Austin Matthews. So, is that where we're at to close out this regular season? That this is Saturday nights about Austin getting 70? I or, guess. Or did we get a few... Uh, I don't know, red flags, concerns last night. Where are you on this? I mean, honest answer is that I'm not that concerned about this because this team does this when they think it's going to be easy or the game doesn't matter or whatever. We kind of get these nights where they're like, I don't know, so all the stars will go get two points. So you're getting these nights a week before game one in the Stanley Cup I'm playoffs? Not saying, well, it's not good. I <laughs> Thanks, Brad May. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't mind them losing before the playoffs, but like 
that the way that looked was not pretty. It was a punt. It was not. And that's the thing. Like, I saw that Tampa lost to Ottawa last night in a shootout, I'm sure. Like, if we yeah. were doing a Tampa show, we'd yeah. be all going crazy about it, too. It's the end of the year. You're playing these crappy teams. I thought Sam Snob wasn't very good. I just, listen. Stunk. I, I want to say that I'm not going to get bent out of shape about it, but it's hard to watch it as a fan and not be like, oh, there's I'm some. I'm most there's concerned some, about the Sam Snob thing. For sure. But, you know, the penalty kill again, three against, you know, time, time to write an, another article saying it's fine. <laughs> flying around like chickens with their heads cut off. There's just a few things I didn't love. Yeah. So are we starting on the overview of, of the Leafs? Or do you I... want to just put a bow on oh, no, uh, an Austin Matthews conversation here? Because I'm I'm the first one to have said that it's it's looking easy and natural and keep them going it's not like this guy's being pushed or taxed or looks like he's protecting something like in previous years with his wrist here so everything's hunky-dory and now we're going into the weekend De last game of the regular season detroit you're not pulling him out of saturday night but after saturday night Two games in Florida. Mm -hmm. What's it look like with you and Austin Matthews? You know what stinks for the Leafs is those final two games, a back to back, are the 16th and the 17th. They're going to open the 20th Saturday night. That's not official. That's conjecture, but it's what's going to happen. So they're going to play three days later. You can't. I just. I don't love the idea of him not getting a rest. So I'm going to be the hater here. If you go back and read my article in Sportsnet, I said I want him to score three or score zero. He scored two, mm. you know, and now the chase is on and we're talking about the chase and it feels like it's taking priority over the team goals. And that's such a hater thing it, to say. It didn't last week. It didn't the last 10 days. Are you asking me? Okay. No, no, I'm no, saying no, yeah. that for me, I'm with you. Yeah. Then the last week, it didn't feel that way. Last night, it felt that way. Yeah. Felt what? like, okay, he needs one more. And Let's uh, go to the coach. I, I put a clip in there about Austin Matthews talking about this, and we can uh, okay. we, we can go off of that, okay? Yeah. yeah. Well, it'd be terrific. I mean, uh, 70 is a nice round number and everything to, to aspire to, but as I said, I think it's what he's doing right now. It, yeah, it's it's pretty incredible. He's rewriting the record books, and, you know, there's a lot of Leaf fans that uh, in their lifetime, you know, haven't seen, uh, haven't seen that many goals in the NHL. So... Um, it's it's pretty remarkable. So you know wherever this ends up going, um, who knows? Uh, you know I wouldn't put any limit on it at this point. But it's just it's terrific to watch. And, and like I said, I think um, I thought tonight was probably the first time I saw, especially once he got the second one. We started to force it a little bit to him, and, and things started to break down. I'd love to see that because he doesn't need that. He doesn't need to just play the game. He's good enough as it is. It's gonna it's gonna find his way to his stick. Um, but uh, yeah, just the way that he himself has just continued to play hard and, and uh, lead the way for us and embrace his line, his line mates, to let that roll while we can work on other things. It's... So what about, yeah, he, so Keefe agrees with you that they were forcing it a bit to him. What if you basically said to him, clear as day, no waffling. You got two games. You're not going to play the final game of the season or you're not going to play one of those final two games. You know, is that a reasonable request of the player? I, I, I don't, he can't, it's, it's a conversation that has to happen after Saturday night. After Detroit. Because the point could be moot if he happens to throw two in the net Saturday night. I see your point, and you're so, so right. you are not having that conversation. We know he's playing Saturday night. Yeah. So... The question is, does he get it or does he not get it? And that changes the dynamics of the two games in Florida. But it's already changed the dynamic of Saturday night. We're watching for nothing else, right? We are not watching for execution, systems play, line chemistry, power play no, connection. You're right. Distance second. Distance second. We are watching Will Austin get 70, and that's yeah. too bad. It's yeah. too bad for the team who's yeah. very good. Boys, the nightmare has been realized. Yeah. We're in the exact spot where I've been talking about this for 
literally, I've been asking about this for yes. this three is my weeks. Nightmare. It's not my nightmare. I just It's obviously very good. It's a, a great, a man, amazing thing. Don't make fun of me for saying nightmare. Um, a man <laughs> is about to score 70 goals yeah, in a Toronto Maple Leaf uniform, and you're talking about it because as a nightmare. Because he wants the team to win. I can't, I, yeah, I love I'm the with, 70 yeah, goals. I, I, I want it. him to get it. I get it. But I don't want him to go into a meaningless game against a team they're maybe going to play in the first round who has a bunch of butchers that are going to be going after him. Yeah. Trying to push for him to get 70 goals. They're going to know he wants 70 goals. He's going to be all over him. I think that there are the majority of our audience listening to this show is like you absolute haters. This is unbelievable. I love this. Yeah. This is exciting. This I've never seen anything like this. Those this haters is haters haven't got a clue how to win a Stanley Cup. That's what I say to them. Not a clue. That's why I like to be arm in arm with you, pal. <laughs> I need you to say that because okay. I, I agree with the logic. Yeah. 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 So I am now at the po point where I woke up this morning. And I'm not telling Austin anything, mm. but I'm telling myself, you get your two goals Saturday night, or then priority is not you. Then it completely drops. And in a perfect world, he gets his two Saturday night. And I'm not thinking about maybe shutting him down for one Florida game. I may shut him down for two. My only thought on that, and I I, I get it, that too. My only thought is that's a long. It's a week. It'd be a week between yeah. games. Is that too much hockey to go into game one, you know, not having played yeah. in a week? He's going to get it Saturday night. So, I mean, that's the moot point here is that Here's it's... Here's what I am going to bet Saturday. Two that's, goals. No, <laughs> plus nine and a half shots. Oh, yeah. He's going to yeah. get... He's well, he <laughs> owns Detroit. He's got 31 <laughs> points in 23 I, games against him, yeah. 16 goals. Like, he owns Detroit. He'll score against Based him. Based on... Based on what I saw last night against New Jersey, I'm not sure I'm looking forward to what it means to the rest of the team and that look, that continual look from last night mm -hmm. for everybody else. It's it's now so separated for me. Which Austin know, yeah. and the 70, and then what you had said before, what about this, 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 the and power this? Power play stinks. Penalty kill. Gave up three. Goaltender. Awful. I mean... Didn't get, they got juice out of Tavares. Tavares had a, a good night. Um, D looked a little suspect. Brody, Brody was bad. Edmondson had a tough moment. You know, there, it was not, yeah. not a night of highlights when you lose to the, the New Jersey Devils. Okay, we're going to get into all of those things that you just checked. Uh, but first, uh, let's get the overview of the game last night through Sheldon Keefe's eyes on our first Kippers Clipper. This game, strange game. We score first shift, first shot, and, you know, we give them a couple of gifts after that. So, yeah, strange game here tonight. Obviously, it's, it's you know, not one that you'll love, but uh, we'll move on. We'll move on. We'll move on. What are you going to do? Yeah, um, really dismissive of holding anybody accountable last I night. I wonder if, if that's and I'm not extremely sure. dismissive. I, I don't know where I'm at in terms of going at them too hard and complete, completely letting them off the hook from yeah. last night. Like there's some, there's some things that you need to work on here, including yeah. specialty teams, which would be at the top of my list. Yeah. And just to kind of shrug it off, I'm not... I'm not on the, the same page but as Sheldon I, I don't think of you that. owe the media that. I, I'm i sure he's aware of those things and wants to address those things or whatever. I don't think you need to make it a public. Well, you don't need to get into details. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you can also say that, you know, last night didn't make me happy. I had a couple of coaches who, over the course of the year, it was like a tear you down, build you back up sort of thing. In the first half of the year, really hard really all over you, you know, and really kind of made you feel like not great about mm. your game at times. And then in the second half of the year, it's like, nice play. And you're like, oh, I am kind of going. And you build you back up. And by this time of year, you kind of stopped hearing negative things. And you're feeling like, God, I'm the best I've ever been. I think there's some merit to, at this point, you're not teaching any new lessons. There's no accountability that they didn't have before. I I'm okay with Sheldon. You're right. I, the, the whole, we'll move on. I don't think they're going to move on internally. Yeah, and I think, well, if you're going to save your big-time media bullets, maybe a week and a half away from uh, last night would be the time to do it, as opposed to a 
a meaningless one against the the, the crappy Devils. Yeah. Well, and that uh, that included Samsonov as well, which uh, what's the word you used? Stunk. What did you say? Sure. Yeah. I, <laughs> I don't know what you pick, said. Pick a, an adjective that, around that, a synonym for stunk, and I'll say yeah. that was me. Yeah. That to me last night, Samsonov was as bad as anything we saw prior to being waived. Very similar, just in terms of like yeah. on the ice, five hole with the, just the heel yeah. of a stick on the ice. And So th- I, I get it. You want to protect him too because you don't want to strip any of the building blocks that he's had. Yeah. So once again, brush it under the carpet. That's fine. But to your point, I think internally they're like, okay, let's, we, we, oh. we, we, we put all our eggs in this basket here. We we get we gotta we gotta make sure he's okay here. Do we have a second basket? Do you want to play the clip from the coach about yes. Sam Snuff? All right, let's hear it. Clearly hung him out to dry early in the hockey game, so we don't give him much of an opportunity to to be in this game here today. So, you know, we'll move on as a team, and we need him to move on as well. I get he's been outstanding for us, and he'll be outstanding next time out. Like I, I was looking at it before the game. I can't remember the number, but I caught my eye the number of regulation losses this guy's had this season. It's pretty remarkable, the the, the uh, opportunities he's given us to win this season. So, you know, I'll rinse this one pretty quick. He's all in on Samsonov. He's good at drawing your attention to some favorable stat. It's like, you go Google that. Well, you know, in the back of his mind, it's like, oh, God. Oh, <laughs> fire drill in oh your brain. God. Just going. So I, he, I watched that sixth goal. Was it the sixth? Yeah. Like, where he just, just kept going he's in under air. the crossbar and it, got out of the way. Yeah. Like he just went like and made himself smaller and it went in the top corner right by where he's. Yeah. I just was like, that was Columbus, the game that you guys did, Sammy. But, you know. Go ahead. No, you go. All good goalies. The best goalies in the whole league. Yeah. Have nights where they just yes. play badly. And you're just praying that was one of them. That's it. You're just going, hey. But. Even the best players have off nights. He didn't practice today, but he was on the ice. Is it the Marlies again? With, <laughs> no, with uh, just him and uh, Curtis Sanford. I don't yeah. think he's clear in this right? time of year, boys. No. So I'm sure it was enough for them what they saw last night to go and revisit. Yeah. Let's drive right? home those fundamentals. Yes. Which says we're not concerned, but we're just a tiny little bit concerned enough yeah. to say we need you a little one-on-one time with your, your uh, goaltending coach. I think there's reasonable criticism to be made about how they've handled their goaltenders over the past little bit. Was that how many starts in a row was that for Samsonov? Three or four? Mm. Three or four, and like all year long, it was is it Wool's Ned? It was it, before Wool's injuries. Wool was the guy, undisputed. I, that's the way I read it. I yeah. mean, our show had given him the crease yeah. in playoffs. And after his injury. Still seemed like his. Boston, here's, Boston. Here's Boston, Boston. We're going to give Samson off whoever it was. That right? to me Washington. was like looking back, and I know hindsight's twenty twenty, but looking back to me, that was a questionable decision. Agreed. Coming off a high ankle sprain, throwing him in there against one of your rivals back-to-back times was yeah. a wild choice at that point. And to me, it said, whether he does well or doesn't do well, we want to put him in these situations because he's going to be our high leverage guy yeah. eventually. Mm-hmm. And then they just said, the guy who's beaten the worst team, Samsonov, is yeah. now the guy. Yeah. And they gave him all the starts. And Wool hasn't played in, it's got to be 10 days now or something like that. Three games left. Yeah. Saturday night against a team fighting for their lives. Playoff oh, yeah. lives. Huge game for the Wings. Huge game. We assume Samsonov yes. is going to play he is. two out of three. Samsonov starting on Saturday night. Oh, my God. Right? Is he really? Yes. Yes. So that leaves the two Florida games. you got to assume you Wall wanna Jones. Give, you got to give Wall one game here. Well, there's no doubt. It... So where, which one do you give him? Well, you know, then you're going to give him Florida. And he's, you know, like. I think. I think you got to give. I think you got to avoid Samsonov against Florida Panthers, for fear he gets lit up. This is like yes. for, like we can't play him in the American well, League for fear he gets lit up. Like, I just you think, think he's good or not? I just think you save him. That's the guy that's going to face. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't show him. I just wouldn't show him against Florida. I don't think they will. So that's going to be it. Be Samsonov here. It'll be Wool Tuesday night against Florida, 
And then uh, Tampa Bay on the final game of the season could be Jones, could be Wool again. Could be Wool. Against Tampa? Sure, he can go back to back. He hasn't played in. Then, then, then you're, then you're one game out of three for Samsonov. Yep. You want is, to be two? You want Sammy know. to get a game in there? I, I don't know. Is I don't think I think it's his last start before the playoffs on tomorrow. Okay, if if, if by chance he gets lit up again, Ugh. you want to go? He gets another you, start. You want to go? <laughs> you want to go? Maybe that's why he's playing right? though. Jersey lit up, Detroit lit up, game one. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, See, this no. Is, this is what sucks about two goalies, boys. I've been saying it for three weeks. Yeah. Because you never know who the... Right? Almost swore. I'm, the, I'm, I'm so rusty. Much you never like know who the goalie is. Austin, do you get 70 or you not get 70? Let's see what Samsonov does Saturday night. will dictate. Mm -hmm. Does he need one more tune-up to turn things around? Sorry, so Wool played in the 5-2 win over the Devils. And it was a 900 save percentage on the ninth. So just a few days ago. Yeah. I was off on that. Okay, I want to get into another conversation because this uh, first 20 minutes is just flying by, and that is home ice. We've had conversations on this. But last night has really done a job on making everybody believe that she go. it's Florida and the Toronto Maple Leafs, and in all probability, the, the series will start in Florida. But let's get Sheldon Keefe on home ice before we get into that conversation. How much do you care about home ice in round one? I, you play the games. You know, we play the games. We're trying to win every single game. And then and, and wherever the games end up being played in the end, we'll be ready. We don't care about home ice. Okay. We don't want home ice. It's, it's the right thing to say. I, you know, we, we've had this conversation before. It's like, if you believe you can win, then you got to believe you can win anywhere. Mm -hmm. Saying that, okay? They're down in Florida. Uh -huh. Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Tuesday, Wednesday. Tuesday, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Do you bring them home oh, Wednesday night? Great question. Yes. Or do you leave them in Florida? No way. Bring them home. But I mean, you're there. You're gonna fly across the country and then fly back because what? If, if they got no one's partying. At this if point. they got a hundred sports scientists. They're getting them back to Toronto. Like they're gonna be like getting your sleep routine. No, but that's they're why they would want to not travel. Listen, you're you're this is the playoffs, buddy. Okay. They're gonna stay down there. This is the playoffs. You know the 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 prep that goes into those first three days prior to game one. This is an insane stretch. Like think about this for a second. The coaching it's, it's Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, I don't know how you, you're I don't, I don't know how you're you feel about the week as is. But let's say it's a decent feel. You fly them home three and a half hours. Yeah, okay, so you get them home two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. You burn that Thursday. Yeah. You got to give them the day off. No, you're right. They stay. You've got yeah, yeah. you've got video sessions. You've got specialty team meetings. You've got a ton of all of that. To prep. When are you going to do that? Friday? Yeah. You got to practice and you got to fly back. It, there is no time. So it's a long trip. Their playoffs start in a couple days, in a few days here. One of my favorite things, so I did the video prep for Sheldon Keefe for five playoff series. And the way that he works teams through is a really cool session where basically... You know, you have all the lines put up there. Each guy has his own section of, like, notes on what they do, their tendencies, whatever. But it's really cool the way they open it up to the dressing room and say, who's played with this guy? What can you tell us about him? What, you know, what does he not like? Is he a guy we want to get in his ear? Or do you want to stay out of his head? Like, it's an, ex like, the prep, well, for a video coach in particular, there's not much sleep over that time. It's a... So you know. Yeah, you that, know. that time frame is crunch so I I have... Listen... Game one and game two factor in this road trip that walks you to Florida prior to that. They're, they're on the road for like 10 days, 11 days. The only thing this you now makes me think. playoff game. This now makes me wonder, will some of these guys not even go to Florida Tuesday? That's why I'm sitting there going, Austin, get your 70 because. You might stay home you, and we'll send you down there for Thursday. You might, you might have to, might miss, might miss those games. Yeah. 
uh, Luke Fox, our intrepid reporter, just texted me. He said, listening to your convo, they are staying in Florida. They are. Oh, it's already done deal? That's what he said. So. Oh, they announced it? Well, I mean, well, Luke knows, so. Yeah. Luke, okay. knows. Luke, you better be right. No, he's always right. Oh, listen, the other way is just a disaster. Oh, yeah, he's ruined. Oh, coming back, you mean? Yeah, coming oh, back yeah. home. I thought you meant he was, he was yeah. wrong. It's like, I don't think it's <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, no. No, I, I'm, I'm with Luke on this That's one. That's a long time away from home, boys. I know. It's a long time. I know. But that may be the best thing for them, you know? You know, my dad's Islanders teams, they or, stayed in the hotel at or, home. Or, or home ice advantage would have been <sighs> the best. I don't <laughs> think so. They, my, they pooped down their leg every Oh, if they had success one. at the end of the year and caught them and got home ice and we all started talking about how great they were, that's their, when they're at their very worst. Exactly. <laughs> they pooped down their leg immediately. <laughs> Uh, thoughts on uh, Max Domi? We're gonna probably take a break in a little while, but we got enough. Five uh, some minutes here. We, we got yeah. we got some time to get into Max Domi's fight last night, and something that we talked about in the intermission is Lee fans wanting or looking for this type of look for a while now. Did it serve yeah. its purpose? I think some liked it, some didn't like it. Well, my controversial take on this is like it's just fine. Good. You know, like he didn't like it and he stood up for his teammate. Maybe should have, maybe shouldn't have, but he decided he should. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, who am I to say, like, what you think is over the line for worthy of pumping somebody? I but think it sends a message to your team that, like, I'll do this. Yeah, Luke Fox, yeah. again, he tweeted out he's yeah. literally fighting to stay on my yeah, line. Yeah. It's, it's true. Yeah. David Amber made a, um, a very good point on our on our telecast last night is, is that what you want to see in the playoffs? And it's like, no, no. first of all, He's going to have to have a different approach on it. Mm -hmm. Somehow, some way sent to send that message. What last night does is plant the, the seed that I am capable of doing this. And sometimes that's willing. enough and, it's, and willing. And that might be enough on its own. But certainly in a playoff scenario, if Max went after a, a player for hitting Austin and it ended up being shorthanded or sitting in the box for 10 minutes. Bigger story. It's a bad look. Yeah. It yeah, doesn't in, work. He was in the box for 17 minutes. One, one thing power I play. do wonder is we're going to get to an update on Max Domi, who is injured mm -hmm. in some capacity. And I do wonder if it happened in the fight. You know, like a knuckle when you're grabbing a jersey mm -hmm. or something, like something small. Because it doesn't sound like he's hurt, hurt. He's going to play in playoffs. But it sounds like something happened. Mm -hmm. Very well could have been during that. Let's go to Sheldon Keefe on Max Domi's fight. I mean, you love Max, you know, he's he's all about the team and, and he's, you know, he's responded to a situation he felt needed needed to be addressed and, you, you know, you love that uh, about him. But, yeah, it has an impact on the game. Not only do you take, you know, to, you know to kill a penalty, but then disrupts the rhythm and the flow of the bench and, you know, all that. But, you know, it's, you know, uh, we'll take it. You know, it's, we got to gotta be able to manage and handle that. But it, he was playing so well, especially, it's not, an ideal to lose him for 17 minutes. Okay, let's follow it up with an update today from Sheldon on clip seven, Derek. Uh, he has an injury. That's, you know, that's a day-to-day -day situation. So I just kept him off the ice today and we'll see how he is tomorrow. Is there a chance he plays more than that? Yeah, there's a chance, yeah. Okay, kind of sounds like he might have got hurt in the fight. I think so. <sighs> Did we I, see anything I, else? Nothing else happened. <sighs> Something? I this is you know, this is what every non-fighting fan will be like. See, yeah, I know. You one of your best players the last two weeks is fired. Is stupid, and you're like, that's why you're like, crap. Yeah, I wish you didn't get hurt in a fight. But at the same time, like, I thought the reaction, like, the, I didn't think it was that egregious of a play. No, the Nemich battle. No, he saw Matthews mad about something. Yeah. He was like, if he doesn't like it, then I don't by proxy. I love the res I love the response to it or whatever. Just sucks he got hurt yeah. because now we can't talk about it as in glowing fights <laughs> as we would have. <laughs> well, Honestly, and we don't even know though. We don't know if that's when it was. So. Uh, maybe, maybe we still can. <laughs> uh, the one thing that comes to my mind again is you're going to play Florida, one of the most willing teams in the league. Yes. When it comes to that sort of stuff, so. The one thing, if I was a Florida Panther today pre prepping for the Leafs, the first thing I would say is I'm going after Austin. Yeah. Because that guy's going to come. He's getting squirrely. Bit, right? Wires are crossing. Wires are crossing. You know, though, I don't and think. And I hope, I hope Max. Dials it in. Dials it in or sure. now understands that uh, 
he's got to be impeccable when it comes to making these type of decisions. I think Max is pretty smart. I think he's pretty mature when it comes to that sort of stuff. I don't see him, you know, off his rocker too often where it seems like it doesn't work for the team. But the other thing there is, I don't think anyone in Florida is changing the game plan saying, let's be hard on Austin now, you know? (laughs) Like, I think that was the game plan. That was when they wrote it up at the top of the pyramid. The first thing we do, punch him in the mouth. Like, oh, 34. Yeah. Oh, that's who we should go (laughs) after. Right. So, yeah, the target's been there. It stays there. You know what it did do, though? It opened up the door for this Nylander, Tavares, Marner Mm. thing that now is going to be a thing and I'm going to be mad about. Okay. Shot attempts 14 to 1 with them on the ice. Yeah, they were awesome. They've been a two line. You want to hear from Sheldon on that line? Yes. Clip two. Uh, I see lots of potential in it, uh, but wanted to get them some reps. And, you know, I see it as something that I can I can move to through a game, you know, when, uh, when it's hard to really get rhythm with three lines. I think it's a way to, to, uh, mm. to simplify that a little bit and, and get those guys out there. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought they were really good tonight, actually. It's a way to panic. Yeah. Okay, we're not scoring goals. Panic time. So we can add another star chasing a milestone Saturday night because it ain't just about Austin getting 70. There's Willie who had 100 locked in the bank a month ago. I know. He was on pace for 125, I think. And then Sheldon Six, put eight him weeks ago. <laughs> and he's pressing, guys. Have you oh, ever yeah. seen him shake his head like he did last night? No, that was a complete outburst what of emotion for it? Willie. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this, this. this. Like, Ooh. That's, a, that's a lot of emotion for Willie. <laughs> yeah, he never shaking does anything. Head. No. Uh, he, yeah, he's, he, he wants it. I will, you know, right now there's nine guys in the NHL with 100 points, you know. 800, it'd be great, and I want him to get it and all that, but no one's changing any game plans to get Neil uh, It's what, what, what you kind of forget is that Marner sat on 99 mm-hmm. and I think didn't play the last game, right? I think so. Yep. I think that's so, right. I don't know. Is, is, is Willie in the equation for a night off this week? If is Willie needs a night Tavares? off, they should give him one. How about Tavares? I, he was good last night. He, uh, Craig and you mentioned last night on our telecast that it's a good game for him. Skating. He's going hard to the net. He's got, got energy in those legs. Yeah, it's night and day for him when he has that little bit of pop. He pulled the one off the wall to get to the middle. You know, you don't always see that. So, yeah, you'd like to preserve that for playoffs. Yeah, Willie's last goal was March 26th, fellas. Now April 12th. Wow. Yeah. I also do think that Tavares is a little inspired by getting Willie and Mitch on his wings. So yeah, like, like, oh, I'll do, yeah, I'll do whatever I can yeah. to make this stick. Yeah. All right, we got a, a oh, few yeah. minutes. No, oh, no, no we got to go. We got to hit a break. We'll go to break? Yep. Okay, when we come back, Ken Daniels will join us, 27-year veteran with the Detroit Red Wings, and he's going to help us tee up that all-important game Saturday night for Steve Eiserman's Detroit Red Wings. That and more when we return to Real Kipper and Bourne. Nick Kiprios, Justin Bourne, Sammy McKee. All right. Let's welcome in a familiar voice and face around the neck, these neck of the woods here in Toronto. Ken Daniels, 27 years now as Detroit Red Wings play-by-play man. Kenny, how are you, man? Thanks for joining us. My pleasure, Kipper. Nice to be with you guys. Yeah, great. So from one biggest game of the year to another uh, for the Detroit Red Wings as they get uh, ready to tackle the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, Saturday night on Hockey Night in Canada. Uh, it, it's It's been a grind here, Ken, for the Red Wings here. I think two wins out of nine tries. Not that, uh, you know, the good news is, although they lost last night to Pittsburgh, it, was a, it wasn't a regulation loss here. But uh, uh, what do you see out of the next, what, three games out of the Detroit Red Wings starting Saturday night? Well, they were already, you know, destiny wasn't in their hands. They needed help. So, you know, to come back from 5-3 down uh, last night to get a point was huge against Pittsburgh. And now Pittsburgh is one in front and tied with Washington. Washington loses to Buffalo. So you're thinking, okay, that's good. Red Wings fall behind 5-3, give up a shorty, tie it. You know, great night for Lucas Raymond. Three goals, one assist. Larkin was terrific. The Brinkett getting some helpers. You tie it 5-5. 
and then uh, just a, a bad miscue uh, in overtime, and you let Sidney Crosby get near the puck. So it was two points there would have been huge. It's see, as do you say, every game seems to be the next must-win game, even though it isn't because you can rely on others. But two points last night would have been huge, and you see it going forward. You need two against Toronto, and then you're home and home with Montreal Monday and Tuesday to close the season. And Montreal's been pretty good of late, so they're playing loose, and uh, Red Wings have to run the table, and then you hope for some help. Home and home with Montreal really changes how you look at their schedule. You look at some of the other teams, the Capitals will have to play Tampa, Boston, you know, like they're, they they do have an adver- advantageous finish. So this game against Toronto, what should Leafs fans expect from the Red Wings? Where are they at? Are they fully healthy? Are they going to see the best version of the Detroit Red Wings? I hope so. And I don't know who's going to be in goal because they needed one more save or two than they got from Alex Lyon, who's been really good. Uh, even heading into the game last night, Alex, the wins weren't there. They, he was keep two, three, and two his past seven games, but his save percentage was around 930. So the Red Wings offense wasn't coming through. And sure enough, he get five, and that's not enough on a night that you just needed another save. So I don't know whether it's going to be uh, Alex Lyon going or James Reimer going. And we can talk about the travel day and the win against Toronto in here in January, but what I think you're going to see is a team that's determined with a lot of veteran leadership. Uh, they got some injuries they're dealing with. They played really well against Washington. Should have won the game, but for two miscues, lose it two to one. Although really two nothing because Kane scored late and had enough to win uh, again just for a few miscues and they needed saves and could have got two points last night. So I think if they carry on with the same game, they're a confident group. They just need it all to come together, and uh, it, it, it has to for them tomorrow night. We're talking to Ken Daniels, the voice of the Detroit Red Wings for Bally Sports. So you mentioned veteran presence, uh, Pat Kane, just his impact so far. And then moving forward, uh, Ken, in terms of is he a Red Wing long term here? Is there a chance that he may sign somewhere else? What's the overall feel about Patrick Kane since he's become a Detroit Red Wing? Well, he's, he's been unbelievable. I, I love watching Patrick. I love dealing with Patrick. Everybody does. He's been uh, nothing but wonderful on and off the ice. And 44 points in, in 47 games, I believe. Uh, pretty remarkable. Seven games winning, seven game winning goals. He's played over just half a season and leads the team. Uh, I think sometimes they defer to him a little bit much, but he's looked nothing but healthy. Uh, would would I re-sign Patrick Kane? I certainly would, but uh, Patrick's given no indication. But I really, you know, for people who say, well, what about Buffalo? I don't see Patrick Kane in Buffalo. I know he's from Buffalo, but even his dad who likes driving the games, I just don't see the fit there in Buffalo. He loves it in Detroit. Uh, his son, Pat, is uh, very close, although they're, they're very young with Alex Dabrinkit's son, Archie. And you know the closeness that he has with Archie. And, and his, uh, his partner, Amanda, is very close with Lindsay Dabrinkit. They're all tight. And that's a big reason why. It was Alex, a big part of why Patrick Kane came to Detroit, let's be honest. I know Vegas was uh, dying to get Patrick Kane, but he chose Detroit. And played at Honey Baked in the Detroit area. Lived at Pat Verbeek's house. Knows all about Detroit. So I know he loves it here. He wanted to come here. He loves everything about it. I think uh, where he saw the Red Wings, were they on the verge of winning the Stanley Cup? No. But he thought he could help them get in the playoffs. And I think he's at least put them on the verge of. Again, it hasn't gone well the last month or so. But overall, if you would have said to Patrick Kane in December with three games left, we'll be within a point in the playoffs, he said would have said, I'll take that. So I see no reason why the long answer is that Patrick Kane wouldn't resign in Detroit. I would think a two-year deal would be fitting for him. But again, I don't know what uh, Steve Eisenman is thinking or what Patrick Kane's thinking at this moment. But I would, would think Detroit would still be the front runner. Tell us about the job Derek Lalonde has done as the head coach. If they were to fall short of playoffs, would it be viewed as a failure? Or is this, this franchise taking a step and moving in the right direction? I think it's taking a step. And if you look at it now, if they miss the playoffs, is it a disappointment? Yeah, Uh, 100%. It's a disappointment. But again, to my earlier point, if you told folks in October, and we said all along on our broadcast, and everyone was saying it, if the Red Wings are playing meaningful games in March at the trade deadline, wouldn't that be great? Well, they're playing meaningful games in April with three games left. So I think they exceeded expectations, really. And then it becomes a disappointment. So it was the glass half full. I guess it's how you want to look at it. I personally don't think Derek alone is in any trouble whatsoever, again, because this team exceeded expectations. 
I don't see a change. I believe he has one year left on his deal. I think he does. So, you know, as a GM, why are you making a change now when you didn't think your team, if you hoped they'd be close, but you didn't even think they'd necessarily make the playoffs. You hope they would. That's why they signed veteran guys as they did. But I don't think Derek Lalonde's in any trouble. Well, if he is, he can always land on Hockey Night in Canada during the playoffs and give away yeah. Tampa Bay Lightning secrets. There you go. <laughs> Isn't he great? I know, and he, he used we a few times, and I get that. <laughs> and, and you know, and Derek's such a personable guy, and he delegates uh, so well, whether it be to Jay Verity or Alex Tangay or Bob Bugner. He's not on the bench, hands-on screaming. He may go after the refs sometimes, and I love that when, when Derek loses it on them. Uh, but he just delegates very well, and the players, as far as I know, really enjoy playing for him, and uh, he can get the best out of many, and he can be tough when he needs to be. So uh, that's how I view Derek. I think the first two years has been a good learning experience for the group, and they've come a long way, especially young guys like um, Sider and Raymond. And Lucas Raymond's going to be a star, and uh, I think they've developed, developed him very well, and they've got some great prospects coming. Ken, I know we discussed uh, the goaltenders, and we're not sure what we'll see out of Detroit Saturday night definitively, but where is Vili Husso in all of this and the disappointment that uh, he didn't get to be the, the goalie that uh, you know they envisioned, I think, signing him? Yeah, for sure, and hurt a lot, and two separate lower body injuries, and I believe he's, well, I know he's in Grand Rapids and playing uh, this weekend, so it's probably too late to even give him a go. I guess uh, against Montreal, they probably could in one of them, but that's part of the reason why the Red Wings signed three. It was to be Alex Lyon, perhaps, in Grand Rapids, um, and they had Reimer and Husso, and then, you know, uh, Alex Lyon didn't start until he got to Sweden. Uh, when the Red Wings played and Toronto was there, what was it, in November, and uh, didn't get a start until then, only because Billy Husso flew over to Sweden, and as soon as he landed, found out his wife was pregnant, and I believe was in Amsterdam on the way back when she had the baby. Mm -hmm. So Billy Husso went home and gave Alex Lyon a start, and man, he, outside of Dylan Larkin, he's been the Red Wings MVP this season. So they carried three goalies all year, figuring maybe if somebody needs somebody at the deadline, and then as it turns out with injuries, it came down to... Lion and Reimer, but uh, Lion has been terrific. And, you know, Reimer's been pretty good, too, when he's had to step in. You can't really complain about his game. I think his last eight starts, he's 6-2 and two, um, with a, I'm looking at it, 924 save percentage. But if he were to play tomorrow, it'll be his first start in seven. So if you go back to the game in, in January when he played so well and, and helped the Red Wings get a win against Toronto, that was a strange day. There was no time to think that day. They got in, what, an hour and a half? Uh, to the arena before yeah, the game right. the bank and you know it was right before the game and we were talking on the plane and I remember coming off the plane with Rasmussen and talking to Kane and we were just shooting the breeze I said these are the games you guys win and Kane said to me because you got no time to think about it I said exactly they were so distracted with other stuff and plane issues that they went in there and said what do we got to lose nothing but the game they went in there and played well enough and Reimer was great no time to think maybe that's what they have to do tomorrow stop thinking just play it hurts the ball club. I, I I heard that in a movie once. Thinking? Thinking. <laughs> Thinking. Don't think me. Yeah. It hurts the ball club. <laughs> Little Bull yeah. Durham. Here's, and here's what I think. I, I think Florida plays at Buffalo tomorrow afternoon at 5 o'clock. So if Florida gets a point against Buffalo, the Leafs have nowhere to move, right? Yeah, they're not going anywhere. No. Right. Okay, so you rest, Matthews. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put in a word. <laughs> Yeah, put it in Florida. We Don't will. play against Florida because you're going to play the Panthers in the first round, so you want to set the stage. That's a big game on Tuesday, so play him there. It was funny. We were on the conference call, and uh, we were talking about games that Detroit had to win, whether it was over Buffalo. And Detroit's had some costly losses this year, uh, blowing a, a, a 4 nothing lead against San Jose at home and losing in overtime, losing both games you played against Arizona, losing at home to Anaheim. Those are the points you look back at. You lose one nothing in Nashville in a game the Red Wings could have won. But, boy, you blow points there and we were on a conference call for one of our games it was maybe a well when when the Leafs had seven games left and I said I'm telling you Red Wings have to win games now because Austin Matthews has seven games left to get seven and you know he's going to be shooting for 70 against Detroit and sure enough here he is uh just needing two for 70 he got 59 and 60 
two seasons ago. I think it was early in the game against the Red Wings. He got 59 and 60 against Detroit, and now he's shooting for 70 again. So, if you, you know, talk, talk to Sheldon and just rest him if Florida gets the point. Well, they listen to the show. Uh, we don't have to tell them. You, yeah, ju- you they're, just they're, told they're, them. They're big fans. Kenny, great stuff, great. man. Have a great call with or without Matthews <laughs> getting 70. That would be fun, too, but uh, hopefully the Red Wings are on the right side, at least to uh, make Montreal mean something for the next two. So thanks, guys. Appreciate All right. It. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Best of luck the rest of the way. Ken Daniels, everybody. Uh, he just called Crosby's 1,000th career assist yeah. and called him getting into the top 10 all-time in points. Could call Matthews 70. It's a good stretch for him. Two Pretty back-to-back cool. games. Yeah. Pretty good. Uh, just to kind of put a bow on last night, did you learn anything more or less about the Toronto Maple Leaf blue line? Well, before the game, I said that TJ Brody was in my lineup. Game one for playoffs. He had been better lately, and he was so bad. And that really, I wouldn't know, I wouldn't say I learned something, but I questioned my previous stance now. And Edmondson needs some game. He needs to get moving. And you? all of a sudden, boy, yeah. Boy, I, he got barbecued by Brat. Yeah, it's the exact type of guy who's going to get him, sneak by him. Yeah. Well, that's where you look at the Leafs and the mobility, and you like Benoit and you like Ed Edmondson, mm-hmm. but they're 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 great if they got body position on you yeah. and they can push you to the side with their comfort zone, but the mobility and the the ability to get back to the center of the ice to protect sometimes can be a little challenging. I think I learned last night that. Yeah, Jake McCabe is more important to the Leafs blue line than mm-hmm. yeah. I might have previously thought. Well said. The one thing I will say in Edmondson's favor not is that the Panthers don't have Jesper Brad and Jack Hughes types. Like, it's like Kachuk and Cousins and Tarasenko and Reinhardt. Like, their wingers are not the little, like, beep, beep, beep guys. <laughs> They're... <laughs> <laughs> that was Road my Road car to truck policy? analogy. Perfect. I, I, I don't think he could have said it better. Yeah, it's more to his taste, I think, the way so, they play. Uh, Do more yeah. dump trucks as opposed to speedy, you yeah. know, like uh, sports cars? Exactly. Yeah. Two coyotes, not two roadrunners. Yeah. They're, they're, they're at the same playing speed, we'll say. Mm. Hey, I got a question for you. Mm. Yeah. Quickly. Honestly, you have a good feel about this stuff. How do you think Mitch feels without Marner? Oh, without Matthews. Like, do you think he watches with Domi and well, sees first of all, the success? I thought Mitch, a boom box I, outside I thought Mitch gave Willie ample opportunity to close in on 100. Did he ever? Yeah. I thought that line so, looked awesome. I think. Don't I think, think it matters? I, well, no, well. I think when push comes to shove, mm-hmm. they'll, they'll be together. Okay. And in the meantime, still got a couple of games here to spread it out. But Mitch is coming off. How long was he out? 12 months. games. Over a month, mm-hmm. maybe six weeks, close mm-hmm. to six weeks. So that's a long time. Edmondson was out, what, two weeks? Mm-hmm. So you maybe give him the benefit of the doubt too. So maybe another important week to get these guys going yeah. a little bit. I am far more confident in Mitch's ability to go to a different line and make that line matter than I am Max Domi. You know what I mean? Yep. The, the one thing that I did notice a little bit here, too, over the last little while is, like, Mitch is so conscientious on the defensive side of it. Mm-hmm. Third guy high, first guy back. You know, if he, if, he, if he loses confidence in some of the guys going to the net, you know, it kind of takes away from his offense a little bit, too. So they got, they got to get a chemistry thing going right now. Yep. If, Just if playing Mitch with Tavares is, and Neal. If Mitch is going to be off of uh, Matthews, might be uh, a good time to kick it in tomorrow night. Yep. McMahon's just like, let's go. Let's All right. Our chance. Thanks to Ken Daniels, who just joined us to help tee us up. The Toronto Maple Leafs ever so closer to a Stanley Cup round with we, what we believe are the Florida Panthers. But we're going to get into that in the next hour. What are the scenarios? How about the Boston Bruins? Are they going to finish on top of the Atlantic? Is Florida there? Still plenty to chew on in our next hour as we go national on the real kipper and born show don't go away
All right, we go national on the Real Kipper and Bourne Show. We are live on Sportsnet and Sportsnet 650 in Vancouver, Sportsnet 960 in Calgary. This hour of Real Kipper and Bourne brought to you by Bet365. Nick Kiprios, Justin Bourne, Sammy McKee, who was on assignment two days ago covering the Masters for the Real Kipper and Bourne Show. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I was not covering anything other than uh, never mind. <laughs> a bucket. Yeah. <laughs> the, the old gentle the old phrasing. Drone. Yeah. Um, hey, get your text in five ninety five ninety. If you're anywhere you're listening in the, in the country, get your text in. I want to get them all organized for the second half of our show, so I've got them all ready to rock. Five ninety five ninety. Text us. Text us. Text us. Canucks. Your Oilers, thoughts. Jets anything. Fans. Let's go. Anything. Your Masters predictions. All that kind of stuff. Text us. Definitely Masters thoughts. Thank you. In a couple of minutes, we're going to be joined by Gary Galley, former NHLer, who's always a great guest. Uh, no one covers the, the league better than him and, and Craig Simpson. And uh, we're lucky for it uh, here at Sportsnet, Hockey Night in Canada. Uh, plenty of guys going on. And, yeah, we've made fun of the league a little bit for this a turtle race of a... <laughs> <laughs> uh, a turtle race to yeah. the Stanley Cup playoff a spots. Oh, you okay, hammer it a every day. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. And hammering it. But it's a dumb league. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Torts. <laughs> but there is a tremendous amount of intrigue on, like, who's playing who? Who's getting in? Who's playing who? If that's one thing that yeah. the league wanted, they, they've got it. I don't think there's a set series yet in the playoffs and we are you know a week from it starting which is pretty crazy pretty cool um i think the most likely playoff series are now winnipeg colorado that's pretty much set and leafs panthers home ice is not set in that yet though because they're both tied mm-hmm. at 104 points through 79 games played yeah oh, so buddies that could be a hockey series oh yeah so we've got like some real big matchups here uh, this weekend, uh, and if we want to start in the East, first of all, mm-hmm. uh, where do the Rangers end up? Where does Carolina end up tonight? Carolina versus St. Louis, and Carolina, as we've labeled, is a kind of one of those. I don't know if they're sneaky or not sneaky. Do we do we put them up with the very best in terms of the expectations? Yeah, definitely, definitely do, and they have. St. Louis, who are a non-playoff team this year, Chicago, Columbus, to finish. They're three points behind the Rangers, who only have two games left. So, you know, it's going to be tight there. The Rangers have the Islanders next. Islanders, Ottawa. So the Islanders have the chance to cost them potentially a President's Trophy if they were to get a win there. (sighs) Rangers and the Islanders tomorrow. Which, by the way, how about that series? At 1230. So, like, so w- while we all want to start talking about load management, these two teams are coming off a week where they, they want each other hurt really bad. Yeah. I mean, you look at uh, Trocek not happy about the Noah Dobson hit. Zabanajed got, you know, ran into by Pellick or whichever way you want to say that. So they're hot. Islanders humming, man. They, they have kind of emerged from this pack of teams. They have 89 points. Right now you have the Penguins with 86. The Capitals, 85. Detroit, 85. Philly, 85. Coming down with the Islanders are probably going to get in. They any, probably need two points in the next three games. Any love for Patrick Waugh, the, the coach that I would have hired if my group bought I the know, Ottawa your senators, senators? Your Senators almost yeah. got... They're crushing it with their minus 20 goal differential. I think they were minus 600 before Washington. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's not his fault. Six in a row, though, again. Like, they've had such a weird the run. They're the team in the league. They won, what, did they win six? Lost, was it seven? Yeah, they've, they're they yeah always winning. Up and down, four, up and down they go. Saturday night, the Boston Bruins and Pittsburgh. Wow. Now, that, that for the Boston Bruins now, they're in a position that if they, they could still end up the top team in the Eastern Conference. I mean, it's a weird year. Which, means, the president's which means they've got a chance to maybe avoid Tampa Bay Lightning. Oh, yeah. You think that's something to play for? Would you want to play Tampa if you're the Boston Bruins? No. Absolutely not. That's the number one team I'm trying to avoid. Yeah, you I'm are there. competing to get whichever team limps into the wild card. That's too. right. Yeah, so this so, is now Rangers versus Bruins. So Boston catches the Rangers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
they can go get Pittsburgh. They can get Detroit. Much different feel than Stamp- Vasilevsky, Cooper, uh, Stamkos, Hall Point, of Shirelli, Kucherov, Hedman. How was that team yeah. in seventh? Yeah, I don't know. But so, so much at stake here. Yeah. This is a, we're, we're at a great window for the NHL. These games are, are certainly big. And boy, the Pacific Division right now got the Oilers four points behind the Canucks. They're going to play Vancouver on Hockey Night in Canada. Presumably, Edmonton will mop up Arizona tonight. I'm just going ahead and calling that one. I know Arizona's been pretty good lately, but the Oilers are great. They could be two points behind the Canucks with a game in hand going into a game against the Canucks, which, you know, you get yourself out of that 2-3 game, which could see Vegas in it, and that would be big in itself, so... All right, we're going to uh, – we, we, have we got Gary or we're waiting on Gary? Okay, a couple minutes. A um, we, you know, it's hard to mention up. the Western Conference without <laughs> talking about <laughs> – oh, by the way, Mark Stone cleared to practice in Vegas. No. Some people want to so, – uh, there's like breaking news or like – no, you didn't see this coming, breaking news? You know what? I'm not annoyed at anyone now being like, hey, wait a second. I am annoyed retroactively <laughs> at the people who, when it happened, were like, it's a real thing, this spleen thing. Yeah, okay. But we know what's happened here. We've always known. Why did we pretend then? I, I mean, know. we didn't. I don't, I don't. But people certainly did. The I just I give think them they just credit. got lucky. I yeah, do you? I do. I think the my favorite thing in this whole thing is the most unprovable injury of all time is spleen. How can you say his spleen's not hurting? I, I can ex- explain it. I <laughs> all right, all right. Boo! But it's like <laughs> it's the most unchallengeable thing I've ever heard of. The spleen, the spleen thing. Oh, it's spleen. <laughs> like if you were gonna come up with something that's fake, spleen. Probably on the top list would be spleen. <laughs> <laughs> He's having glandular issues. Like, what is go- spleen? I'm never going to forget spleen for the rest of my life. And I do not blame Vegas. No, I don't. Not. They are competing don't. to win the cup. I tell you who. You play but, to win the game. I'm an Oiler fan, boys. Ooh, Hot. I am pissed. Hot. All right, let's welcome him in. He's got his camera, I believe, all set up. Welcome in, Gary Galley, Sportsnet Hockey Night in Canada. Oh, you look great, buddy. There he is. Look great. My spleen was bothering me. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it got healed just in time. Oh, boy. Want to get your thoughts right out of the gate just to pick up our conversation on the news that uh, Mark Stone has been cleared for, for practice. And lo and behold, yes, I think there's some still challenges for Vegas. It's not a, you've been around the game long enough where you know that anything can look great on paper, but to come together in a quick manner, I think Vegas still needs to do that. Just your overall thoughts on Vegas lying in the weeds right now with a huge impactful player like Stone on the cusp of coming back. You know, it's like, it's really difficult at any time to question a player's injury. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, I think hockey players in general are, you know, when they're hurt, they're hurt. Uh, most of them will play through, uh, you know, minor injuries. But and some of them, will, as we saw in the playoffs last year, some of the guys will play with significant injuries. Um, so um, you don't want to question the injury. Uh, maybe you question more, you know, the timing of when it's going to be healed. And you know you could plan it around that. Uh, given Mark Stone and all the b- bounces and bruises and, uh, and dents that he has on that body, it would be okay to give him a bit of a rest heading into the playoffs, knowing he's going to, he has shown you in the past, he's able to step it up to playoff gear and get going and lead this hockey club. So an emotional guy, I don't expect to see anything different. Um, Vegas has been, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, I think trying to weave through the uh, quagmire of winning a Stanley cup and then trying to repeat it. Uh, keeping guys fresh, guys that are, you know, played a lot of hockey, trying to get them to, to, you know, to, you know, lock back in and play that playoff type brand as you're coming down the stretch. They haven't been able to do it. They've added a few pieces. Those have, take time to gel, but 
yes, it can happen. Um, but uh, I, I do think there are other teams that I would put ahead of them going into the playoffs right now. So how much do you think a team's playoff seed, like going into the postseason, matters? I'm asking about Vegas, but I'm also asking about Tampa Bay, who's going to enter the postseason as a wild card team. You know, like, is it really indicative of the type of teams that they are? Or is it just sometimes teams have tough circumstances along the way and these are still uh, Stanley Cup contenders? Well, we, I mean, like, you know, it, it's really hard to, uh, you know, I've, you know, I've been to the Stanley Cup finals, you know, and I haven't won a cup, but, you know, Nick has, and he's been through the grind of it all. And he knows what it's like to kind of reload back in the summer and, and get going again. And remember, Vegas got off to that great run and got going like crazy. And everyone thought, oh, man, they're just hit the ground running. But you know you're going to hit a bump somewhere. You know you're going to hit some bumps. The key is, can you time it so that you're hitting the playoffs on an upswing and you're feeling confident? Even though they've won a cup, it's about feeling confident going into this thing. You look at the Nashville Predators. Uh, two weeks ago, who would have wanted to play them in the first round? Now, they've shown a little bit of, you know, some guys are getting a little bit beat up as they're making this hard run. Saros has looked a bit off, you know, probably getting a bit tired. They need to start resting him as they've got the playoff spot. I think, you know, you look at a team like Tampa Bay, who's kind of took a while to get going, but now they've got it going. They've got the potential Hart Trophy winner there and the guys who know how to win in the playoffs and Braden Point, and, you know, but it's just really hard to know. There's like a half a dozen teams out there that I think if the, if they can stay healthy uh, uh, through the playoffs or generally stay healthy, they have enough depth to get it done. And it could be any one of those six in my mind. I don't think there's a clear favorite and that's what makes these, that's what's made this year kind of crazy. And we're still going through some of the craziness down the last three or four games of the season for positioning and everything. But, to hit the playoffs playing your best hockey. Like, put it this way. If you're the Winnipeg Jets, you had that incredible downturn where it looked like, oh, my Lord, everything's falling apart. And now they've caught it back together again. And they've beaten Colorado. They've beaten Dallas. They're showing that they're a good four-line team that's got some good four-check and can really rattle and hum. Uh, they've still got some areas that are question marks for me, but I think every team does. There's no perfect team out there right now. We're joined by Gary Galley, former NHL or color analyst with Sportsnet and Hockey Night in Canada. Gals, we saw Vancouver see its lead over Edmonton shrink to just four points here. Connor McDavid not questioning what what's nagging him, but sure, I get it. I sure do get a sense that it's more load management than anything else. Your thoughts on the big game this weekend and and. Uh, and where Edmonton truly stands here, uh, for rest versus rust going into the playoffs. I, I think Connor McDavid, I think, is the type of player that I believe would have wanted to play, play it out, go into the playoffs feeling like he's, uh, you know, there's no rust on anything. He just he's he's running and gunning. He's firing on all cylinders. Don't change a thing. Just go right into the playoffs that way. There has to be something going on with him that maybe just isn't settling itself down. And I think when he started to make the run and Kucherov just kept loading up the points, it was kind of like, you know, do we really feel it's important to keep running this guy? And cause it's important, you know, he wants to win the scoring race and that's a, it's an individual thing, but you know, it's his legacy and all this stuff, or is it more important to make sure that these, these little things that are bothering him are settled so that when we hit the playoffs, winning the Stanley cup is the only thing that matters. And um, I think Connor McDavid is going to win, Art Ross trophies moving forward in his career. I think he's going to win Hart trophies. Uh, but the one trophy that is a timing thing and where the timing is of the Edmonton Oilers is that they're playing some of their best hockey of the season. They look like a team that's figured it out. Um, they've got some guys who are having great seasons. Uh, if they can transition those seasons and segue them into the playoffs, they're going to be a dangerous team. Of course, goaltending, which is for a, a lot of playoff teams, a question mark. Um, you know, can they get it done in that area? And can they defend uh, when the games get into game five, six, and seven to win a series? Can they defend well enough to win? They know You know they can score, uh, but I do believe that there is some things bothering Connor McDavid. I don't think they're serious, but I think they're enough for the Edmonton Oilers to say, why not just let him get rid of these things and hit the ground feeling 100% when the playoffs start? Because having a Stanley Cup in the end of June is a lot more impressive than having the Art Ross Trophy. Gary, less than a week before the end of the season, I don't know if there's ever been an MVP race that is less decided. Connor, obviously a part of that conversation, but
But depending who you talk to, I mean, you can get four to five different answers. Kucherov is going to have 100 assists, 100 assists. McKinnon, the front runner. Matthew's going to score 70. McDavid's the kind of the consensus best player in the game. Quinn Hughes, go through Panarin. What are your thoughts on how this is all going to shake out? You know, the definition of the award really seems to be what everyone seems to be caught up in. You know, who is the most valuable to his team? If you took this player off this team, what would this team be like without him? I think it's too hard to just, you. <laughs> it's really hard to go that way about it. If you took yeah. those players off teams, they would, they would drop for sure. So um, I just think we're talking about a real special year. And we're looking at a couple of players that are going to have 100 helpers. Uh, we're going to have some 50 goal scores, possibly, like you said, a 70 goal score, which is hasn't been done in, in quite some time. Um, and you've got a, a, a an aging veteran, um, uh, you know, superstar, uh, first ballot Hall of Famer, top probably five players in the history of ever playing the game, who's carrying a team on his back, and 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 has kind of willed them with his play at his age into the playoffs. How important is that? You know, like there's so many things you could look at, but at the end of the day, it comes down to me. It comes down to, to, to the three players that everyone's been talking about. It's McKinnon, it's Kucherov, it's McDavid. I think it's going to come down to those three guys. And there'll be a lot of people that are going to say, you know, McKinnon, you know, has done a lot of wonderful things and everything. He deserves this. No one deserves it. You earn it. And, and you don't just get it because you haven't got it before. You get it because you deserve it, and I do believe that uh, when it all comes down to it, uh, I do think it will fall between McKinnon and Kucherov, like it has been kind of presented all season long, um, and one of those guys will will take it home. Okay, you just can't throw, you just can't push Connor McDavid aside and go to that without giving us your winner. Well, I, I think if I'm going to pick the winner, I, I, in my opinion, I think it's Kucherov. Wow, you know, because Kip too, but everyone. Everyone tried to climb back in his back pocket. He put the Heisman up, and he was like, I don't think so, boys. Back off. Like, he he is really dialed in. Um, I think, yes, you have to look at this is a team that has some great players that he's, that he's playing around, but he is the straw that stirs the drink there. And when he is going, he drags a lot of people along with him, and he makes a little like, – this is a guy who takes on a lot of attention, right? A lot of – he takes up a lot of oxygen there, and that leaves a lot of other space for guys like Braden Point and Nick Paul and all these guys to go around about their business. Uh, and Kucherov, with the tight checking, still finds a way to put up three, four, five points a night. And McDavid and McKinnon were turning the screws on him. Man, he turned around and said, I don't think so, boys. So unless there's a crazy resurgence by one of them that overtook him and just had this crazy finish, I would say that I, I'm leaning towards Kucherov. You got a dark horse in, in these playoffs once they start. Uh, I don't even know if you can call anybody. Uh, it's so unpredictable in terms of a, a real long shot here. Nashville has been a team that I, I can't figure out at, at all. Like, yeah, I get it. Yossi, Saros, Philip Forsberg, like great, great talents. But we, we never saw that coming out of Nashville. No. Yeah, I don't think I don't. I, I think I had Nashville as potentially a team that could make the playoffs, and they shocked me when they were playing as bad as they were. I think that we have to give some credit because we give credit a lot of times to the players. And you mentioned three wonderful players there. I think you got to mention Ryan O'Reilly, who brings that on his sleeve type attitude and wins faceoffs, won a Stanley Cup. I think he's been a real great addition to the Nashville Predators. Evangelista, they got some other guys in there that have really had solid years. Forsberg, of course, the game breaker. They got the Norse Trophy defenseman, and they got the Vezina goalie. So if you look at a team like Tampa, you look at a team like Nashville, they kind of fill the spaces with some really good players at every position, so it makes them a dangerous team. Um, but I give a lot of credit to Andrew Burnett. I think he really uh, pulled this thing back together, whether it was the concert they canceled in Vegas, the U2 concert, or whatever it was. Uh, he he lassoed this group and got them back on track. I give him a lot of credit. And for me, I think there's a guy who could be up for coach of the year or he should be in the nomination for it anyway. But, um, you know, I, I just, you look at the East and you, send, you tend to think that the one and two seeds are going to have an easier time in the East because they're going to play Washington or Philadelphia or 
you know, or maybe it's, it's going to be Pittsburgh. So in your mind, you think that's going to be an easy out, but guys, we've seen Columbus take down Tampa. We've seen things in the past happen that are unex, uh, unexplainable, but you would think that the Rangers and the Boston Bruins, who I believe will eventually finish in first in that, but if not Florida, I don't think they're going to have a tough time with the remnants of who came in in the bottom two wildcard spots. Um, you know, I know Tampa, you know, certainly might provide a challenge more so than the, than the eight seed, but I, I, I don't think those teams are going to have a problem there where if you shift it over to the West, I think, I think, man, one through eight, two through seven, you pick whatever poison you want. You better be ready to go on the puck drops or you could find yourself on the outside looking in real fast. One organization that uh, crossed paths with you was uh, the Philadelphia Flyers, just the fall of this organization that looked so promising for a Stanley Cup berth and now on the outside looking in, just your overall thoughts on Philly and more important, Tortorella. Did he lose something here? Did he did he open up something? Or is this just a team not ready? Yep, opened up a can of whoop. You know what? <laughs> that, 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 you know, Torts, Torts, Torts is, uh, I played for Torts in Buffalo. He was an assistant coach when I was there. I have nothing but respect for John. Uh, I consider John a friend. Uh, and uh, there are times when John's emotion gets the better of him, and it's, it's hard to be in his corner sometimes when you see some things. But this is a team, and I know this is like everyone thinks they're falling down, but I do believe this is the beginning of them getting up. I think the hiring of Briere and Jones and all this changing in the front office, Torts putting his fingerprints on this team uh, like Pocket did in Vancouver. There is a particular way you have to play if you're going to be a Philadelphia Flyer. There's a particular way you're going to have to play if you're going to play for John Tortorella. And if you don't play that way, you don't play. It, this is They're looking to have uh, you know that, that atmosphere and that they have around their team that when you're when you come into play as a flyer that's the way you have to play and yes they've had a fall here uh, out of this out of the playoffs but man washington lost how many games in a row you look at new jersey was coming they lost a whole bunch of games in a row like a lot of teams detroit like a lot of teams that were hanging on there they just don't have the ability to know how to win in this stage of their development as 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 a team that's mm -hmm. rebuilding and so when the games and the expectations start to get closer and a lot tougher, uh, you know, that stuff starts to creep into your head, how you think, how you play, your head's thinking, your feet aren't moving, uh, mistakes are magnified, coaches are more intense, everything changes, you know, when a team is playing, not even making the playoffs, you know, you look at Ottawa cruising along, winning games and whatever, there's just no, no anxiety, no pressure, no expectations. So it is harder to win like that. I do think the Flyers, at the end of the day, if they don't make it, they will be disappointed. But I do think they will look back on what they gained fighting to get into the playoff picture, battling for a playoff spot. That's all valuable games and valuable lessons they'll learn moving along. Um, I know we're hearing things, you know, Torrance is going to move up to management. He's, he most certainly could. This is a guy who's been around the game and knows the game uh, you know, as well as anybody, and he could help in a lot of different areas uh, within an organization. But I do believe his love is coaching, and I do believe that he wants to see this through and get this Philadelphia team and uh, back back to the, you know where it believes it can get in the next year or two and be a strong contender. And that's kind of my opinion of where I think it's going to go. You know, the uh, Canadian teams have some really strong candidates in general talking about coaching uh, for the the Jack Adams. You know, Rick Tockett in Vancouver, great job. Rick Bonus done an awesome job with Winnipeg. Knobloch taking over Edmonton, great job. Like, they have some of the, the front runners. Is, is there any of the Canadian teams to you that seems to be in the best shape, playing in a really good game that, that has a chance to go deep? You look, every year, some team, Florida surprises, Montreal goes to the cup final. Any of these teams could have a shot. Is there one of them that you think is playing well? Well, I, I think Edmonton's had a, uh, you know, has, has had a great, season after that terrible start mm -hmm. i think they're in that when you have the best player in the world and dry not too far behind him you got hyman you got all these all these wonderful offensive players that always been the question is are they going to get the ability they're going to get good goaltending they're going to have the ability to def defend in stanley cup playoffs when everything changes and you're winning games two to one or three to two you know or do you can you switch over to that and be comfortable in your skin playing that way uh that's the thing to be the question there 
Um, you know, I think you look at the uh, Vancouver Canucks. Talk has done a crazy good job there. Um, you know, realigning the way a Vancouver Canuck thinks, how is he playing and is he really playing hard as he can play? I mean, you know, oftentimes you can't see the forest from the trees. I think Rick Tockett opened the players' eyes in Vancouver that you may think you're playing good hockey, but you're not playing good enough. And he found a new level for them. Now, yes, they took off. They had a little bit of a downturn now kind of coming back up again. Uh, you know, I, I, th I think this is a team that has a lot of weapons that could do some damage in the playoffs as well. So, you know, Winnipeg, man, I thought, they could have finished. They could have won the president's trophy. And then all of a sudden everything kind of fell apart. I, I think Rick had a bit, you know, had to have that surgery. Uh, he left the team for a little bit. I think they were dealing with a bit of, I think they had some really good runs. I think they were dealing with a bit of fatigue, uh, maybe some scheduling stuff that caught up to them. And this team just had a bit of a, a bit of a tip off, but man, if, if they got it back going again, I think that um, if you're in the hockey world and you have been in the hockey world, for a long period of time, is there anybody more deserving than Rick Bonus to win a Stanley Cup? Right. Has put his whole life into hockey uh, as a player, as an assistant coach, as a coach. His whole family is in the game. <laughs> you know, like, and one of the nicest families you'll ever meet. Uh, and it's been great for the game of hockey. So, I mean, they don't hand Stanley Cups out because you're a nice person. I understand that. But I'm just saying, what a story that would be. And, and the team in Winnipeg after they had that incredible letdown last year against Vegas, where I'm not saying they should have beat Vegas, but I think they didn't play uh, the way they could have in that series where it could have been a, a six, seven game series. Uh, they just kind of lied down and that wasn't palatable to Rick bonus or the jets management. So they have something to prove here, you know, and I think it's going to be, and they added to Foley and Monaghan are these guys, uh, you know, going to score a whack of goals in the playoffs, brain break, game breakers. No, but they don't hurt you. They won't hurt you. These are guys that can play responsible hockey. They got four good lines there. They got a world-class goaltender on defense. That's where it's going to be, where I thought things kind of fell apart last year on the back end. They started to run out of gas. They had some injuries to Morrissey and that, and it really hurt them. But I really think that, you know, if Winnipeg um, gets off to a good start in the first round, I think they get their legs underneath them. They could be a dangerous Canadian team. And it starts a week tomorrow. Oh. Let's go. Giddy up. <laughs> Gals, great stuff, man. As always on our show, we so appreciate your time. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, sorry about the spleen injury. I took a bit of time. <laughs> it's all right, Thanks, buddy. Gals, appreciate it. You're good to go. Oh. We're, we're load managing him, <laughs> right? That's why we usually go 22 minutes with him. We went 18. Yeah, right? we're preserving him for ah. the playoffs. Exactly. Love Gals. Oh, he's the best. The man. Uh, Brassois in Winnipeg. Mm. Like, look at what he's done behind Hellebuck. Oh, Hellebuck's yeah. gotten so much attention, rightfully so. But I don't know, the last three weeks, four weeks, this guy's been Very like good. money. Shutouts. Yeah. I had to tell you, you know, home ice advantage in this series is massive because playing in Colorado at elevation is a, it's a significant disadvantage. You playing at home in Winnipeg is a yes. big advantage. And you know, this is a Jets team to me that can win. They have goaltending, they are deep. I think they Colorado's I mean, they're not and, perfect. And, and nobody's talking about Winnipeg. No, like, not like Well, that's that's not great like for player. them, right? It's perfect. Don't mention that Gorgiev may be a sieve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, or that there might be some questions down the lineup. Go ahead and talk up Colorado. Let Winnipeg just go in, you know, thinking, playing playoff hockey with their elite goaltending. Lorraine, you never know. Brassois is a very, very good backup goalie. Oh, I mean, you know, he's probably a starter. Well, no, I mean, he, played, he has 139 career yeah. starts. He's got a 9-11 save percentage. Career. And his, 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 yeah, it's for his career. Yeah. And his totals are like, you know, 14, 21, 19, 14, 24, 11, 22. So it's just like a guy, like the perfect guy that plays yeah. the perfect amount of time that gives you exactly what you need. Like that's, you know, having a good backup goalie when you have an elite guy is Ugh. massive. But think about all those back-to-back sleeves used to blow and they had like, I, don't know, <laughs> I forget the guy they I signed. get all the goalies they But they, they had. just had yeah. so many bad guys and it's yeah. just, it's it's so valuable. So yep, anyways, uh, little game time. Uh, absolutely. It's game time. Uh, absolutely. If I have my lineup open, it's game time. Presented by Bet365. Visit the app for latest odds and find out why it's never ordinary. Bet365 must be 19 plus. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. Wow, he memorized it.
I, that was amazing. That was impressive. I had no idea if I was going to be able to do that. <laughs> I left my lineup upstairs for the second straight show, so I didn't have it in front of me. <laughs> Um, Welcome back, Sammy. Yeah, I you know, and my brain's not firing at all cylinders here. Uh, checking in on the Masters odds, mm. because as the leaderboard stands, I'm just pulling up the leaderboard here as my phone is, uh, first of all, the Masters app is out of control good. Quality app. Uh, the leaderboard is as follows. Bryson DeChambeau and Scotty Scheffler are tied at the top at minus one. Max Homa is the next closest at minus six. Hoygaard, Davis, Morikawa, Auberga, down it goes. Yeah. DeChambeau's minus seven, right? Yeah. Yeah. According to Bet365, there's really three guys that are going to win this golf tournament. Scotty Scheffler is plus 105 live right now to win. Ooh. I love having him at 4-1. to one. Sure All of a sudden, do. feel great about that. Yeah. When I was plugging my nose earlier. Yeah. Bryson DeChambeau, DeChambeau is plus 375. Max Homa, pl- plus 600 live. I got him at plus 1,200 after round one. Love that. Yeah, jumped and in there. And going up to plus 2,200, it's the next guy. It's Colin Morikawa. There you go. So don't hate that. No, I don't hate it either. He's a guy that can go nuclear. You know, you Fitzpatrick, who's minus two, minus one today. Yeah. And as long as these guys stay plus. close, anyone can still climb up. Big Saturday. But it just, it, it's all under the understanding that Scotty Scheffler could go out there on Saturday and just ruin this whole he golf tournament to for miss everyone. The shorties yes. to keep everyone hanging. Do out. your odds drop if you're just wearing like the goofiest <laughs> outfit? Is that Jason? Well, Day? Sergio should have been kicked off the tour for his outfit what yesterday. Was that? I didn't see Sergio. What? Yeah. No. Oh, he it wore... looked like the throw up emoji. Look at it. <laughs> Look at it right now while I'm searching at the hockey. There was the hockey green odds. and yellow. It's one of the worst outfits in the history of the sport. He should have been kicked off the tour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. So yeah, she looks like an SOS pad. Not a ton of great games tonight on the ice. I'm going to be honest with you, fellas. A lot of big favorites. Um, there's not a ton of value. I guess you can look at some teams that, you know, I don't think the uh, Calgary Flames should be minus 140 favorites over anyone at this point of the no. season. They're in Anaheim, plus 120. Maybe take a shot with a dog like that with a team that's checked out in Cabo mode. But outside of that, not a ton of value on the ice. And that's why I went with the Masters. And that was Game Time, presented by Bet365. Visit the app for latest odds. Find out why it's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 19+. plus. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. Well done. Thank you. Okay, let's take a quick break. Catch our breath while you, we tee up the text messages. Got a, got a bunch of good ones already, boys. You yep. do. I do. 9590. If you want to try to sneak one in, we'll get into some news and notes, including a new general manager. In the Four Nations Tournament. Mm. We'll tell you who that is for Canada. Uh, Rod Brindamore, some news on him. Mm. Mm. What that? Tons more. Don't go away. It's Real Kipper and Bourne. This segment of Real Kipper and Bourne is brought to you by Hyundai. Nick Kiprios, Justin Bourne, Sammy McKee bringing it home on this Friday. Usually, it's off the rails with... Mm. Including Doug McLean. That was my first text question. Oh, yeah? It was? Yeah. What do you got? It says, um, nice to have Sammy back. <laughs> <laughs> but, thanks to Sammy's wife for sending that in. <laughs> but where is Mac on Off the Rails Friday? Two in a row, Max, I think, boys. It, it, oh, we didn't have a show last week, so. It's Mac's birthday. Oh. Isn't it a big one today? And it's a milestone. What would Mac Third 100? Well, Max 60. if... Uh, if Austin scores two, it'll match Doug McLean's age. No. Really? And no it, way. I, it, like, 10 years ago, I remember doing Hockey Central at noon and bringing him, like, a, a muffin with a candle in it. <laughs> and I almost set the uh, sprinklers into the uh, you, you studio. You got him a muffin? For a Listen, <laughs> it, was, it was special. A special muffin? It, it, was, a, it was a muffin. It was a laced? <laughs> <laughs> And that felt like yesterday. Yeah. And he turned 60. Well, at least he's living right. I don't know. Every no, time he's I... had a member guest right now, oh. a two day member guest. Yeah, I think at that's some the coolest thing. Posh that's... resort. Yeah. He's playing Indian Creek Golf Club, a uh, country club in uh, Florida. Apparently, one of, apparently, one of the top 100 courses in America. I'm guessing it's, you know, free golf, big prizes, great course. Yeah. Doug's living right, I'm telling wow. you. Wow. No wonder he, he sent, blew us off. He sent out a great picture. If you go to his Twitter account, he looks extremely happy. <laughs> way more happy than he would have been talking to us. And we also, you know, don't pay him. Yeah. So he's free to kind of do <laughs> yeah. what he wants. Well, we got him a well, job we as a scholar. As much. We, 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 
We sell them books. He got a job we, as a scholar okay. because of us. <laughs> How many copies do you think we sold of that book? Do you really book? think anybody would have bought his book without us <laughs> on the show you telling people? You get kickbacks people? on that? You get a piece or what? Yeah, nothing. 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 Feathers. Yeah. That's what I got. Okay. Got a really nice text here, boys. I'm going to read. Okay. Self-serving one for us. Right. Uh-oh. What can I say? The three of you are the highlight of my day. What a team. You the best. I'm a 70-year-old great-grandmother. Grew up in Newfoundland, and I am the biggest Maple Leaf fan. I now live in, live in Salmon Arm, B.C., and during every te- game, my childhood, my childhood friend and I, who still lives back home, text back and forth. I cannot lie. We do lots of swearing, but lots of big fun for sure. Yes. Thanks for allowing your audience to enjoy all of your hockey knowledge. I love your guests. Have you ever had Joe Bone on your show? Yes, we have. He's my fave. P.S. Sammy, you're the best Leaf fan ever. From Mary Elizabeth. <laughs> I love Mary Mary. We love you, Mary Elizabeth. Yeah, Salmon Arm. What a beautiful place. So there you go, that's boys. Awesome. That's great. All right. Appreciate they're that. Thank they're you all very downhill much. after Mary. Yeah. yeah. Another great question here, boys. Hello. Back in the day, there were dynasties. Thinking of JB's father's Islanders, four in a row. Before them, the Flying Frenchman Habs won four in a row. The Oilers won five of seven. Will this ever happen again today in today's NHL? Cheers from Kelowna. Todd. Kelowna. There you go. Well, he counts up. Uh, where do you put Tampa Bay's? Two or Pittsburgh's two. Chicago's three. Chicago's three. LA's I mean, two. those are mini salary cap dynasties. Yeah. That to me is the thing, is the salary cap. Those are dynasties and because the of teams. Now, it's been talked about a little bit, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to grow here. Yeah. And I'm talking about the distance between some teams that can offer less taxes than other teams and we just saw another prime example when noah hannafin signed for 7.35 in vegas i'm telling you for him to have been a toronto maple leaf or a new york ranger Mm. they would have had to offer nine and a half Mm. okay that's a big deal that's a concerning deal and i don't know what the answer is i'm not here to tell you the answer but i am telling you when the when the salary cap continues to grow, so does that advantage for okay. those teams. Yep. And you're still the Rangers, the LA Kings, the Toronto Maple Leafs, Vancouver, you are amongst the, the highest grossing franchises carrying a lot of freight for a six billion dollar industry. You are at such a disadvantage. I wonder if that competitive disadvantage. You are pushing the money down to the lesser markets, and they are taking full advantage of signing players for less on the salary cap than you. It, so your it, point is that these those teams will have an advantage and could have dynasties eventually. They could hang on. They could hang on. Yeah. So with that, I think that with the salary cap rising, good teams now, like let's say you're getting good now, you should be able to hang on to your players. Like no team took it harder than the Tampa Bay Lightning who've had to move on from what is essentially a Stanley Cup team of, you know, Gord, I know, you know, whatever. World smallest violin? Yanni Gord, Kalorn, Tyler Johnson when he was good. Um you know, go through the list of guys, Palat. Yeah. They, Eventually, they're going to have to pay Coleman, the Fiddler, Goudreau. though, right? Because they've they've given up a lot yeah. of assets to go but get had to do some that fresh cap blood. Because of the cap. So they've had to get Brandon Hagel on his minimal contract, yeah. and they've paid assets for that. If they didn't have to worry about the cap so much, they wouldn't have to pay assets as much. And so getting good now, you'll be able to separate yourself. Yeah. And I also wonder, let's say the cap goes up a lot over the next five years. We'll, are all owners, right now, 90% of owners spend to the cap. It's been flat for years. Yeah. Will they all be willing to go that high? I don't think so. So taxes, higher cap, owner mm. spending differences, you may see teams separate and stay at the top for longer. So, we, yes. We just got a text that said, the answer is the cap figures needs to be before the tax. The cap figure pre-tax yeah. money. Yeah. That sounds pretty reasonable to me. Kipper? Let's try it. Okay. Love it. Uh, let me get it. This is the 17th attempt at getting on the show. Okay. 17th <laughs> time's the charm. As I say. Uh, between Kipper, Bourne, and Sammy, with possibly Philly and Washington crapping the bed for a playoff spot, what are your three predictions and hopes as to who will take 
A, the last wildcard spot, and take the last Metro spot, what will their playoff chances be in round one? Well, I can answer that part for you first. Mm. Not great. Not great chances. For the team that gets in. The only team that has a chance if they get in is Pittsburgh. Because they have elite players who can <sighs> black out. So, what are you really doing this? They're the Florida thing? No. Like, because I think I've seen that narrative a lot where people are like, they're this Grab year's claw, Florida. But I'm like, I don't Here's know. Why they might be. Are we sure that the one seeds are that much better than the Penguins? You love the Bruins? What have they been since January 1st? Oh, just over 500? Listen, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to handicap teams from the net right to the end of the blue paint. And I don't, <laughs> who's in front of that after is a, a second conversation. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm putting a lot of stock into whose goalie shows up early here mm -hmm. has a chance. Yeah. And just an example of, of, of the Leafs here, when Samsonov's first, second, or third star, the Leafs win. If he is giving up six goals on 20 shots like any other team that mm -hmm. plays, you, you got no shot. 70-goal score, 100-point assist guys, no shot unless... Your goaltender is one of three stars that night. You know, among teams that have two goalies, I wonder if, like, you learn from Boston last year and just have a quicker hook. You know, like, if Samsonov comes out in the first period of the game one and gives up a couple of stinkers, maybe just go, we're just going to do it right in, right away. Joseph Wool's going in so, game one. You know, you know look at same, the, same this. backup goalies, Brassois. And, and I'm not saying that Hellebuck right, made hiccup. Right, but if he has but a bad like, night, you trust him. You know, the other guy that has been really impressive is that Stolarz. Stolarz, Stolarz is my favorite backup outside of Brussels. Right? He's got a great setup, too. His gear looks great. Like, <laughs> Does he? Oh, no, yeah, it looks you really know, good. He's got great numbers, I can tell you that. Bobrovsky was fantastic last year and still probably the main reason why the Leafs got uh, lost in five. But don't forget, he didn't start playoffs for them. Lion did. Yeah. He came in. He came out of the pen. Yeah, and got hot. So your backup can do that yeah. for you. Yep. All right. Good answer, boys. Um, I whoop, pulled up my wrong page here. Uh, hey guys, just texting from Calgary. Uh, nice. I would like to hear what your opinions are on Calgary's big moves this off season. The noteworthy of noteworthy, Ray. Thanks, Ray. You know, I think the Calgary Flames could have talked themselves into. We got a playoff team, yep. you know, and we're going to hang on to these They're guys. They're probably better than the Blues. Like, if they yeah. would have kept their team together, like, they would have been probably better than them. They'd be humming around a playoff spot, whatever, but they had to be honest with themselves. You know, they're going to get a new arena in, what, 2027? They're going to move in. You want to be ready for them. I, I, I liked what they did. Just tell me where Markstrom is in September. Oh, well, sure, New Jersey. Okay. <laughs> and then um, we're looking at Wolf Yep, as the number one goalie. Wolf Ladar. Mm. Wolf Ladar for another year at two mil, don't you? I don't know. I mean, B Buffalo thought they were going to make Devin Levi mm -hmm. uh, yes, a, number one, point. a number one goalie. Good parallel, actually. Yeah. So, come on. Some of these guys, they need six years to come into a, a mindset. And they're all talented. Yeah. They're all coached the same way. That's why sometimes you can barely recognize them. They all look the same. But what's the difference? Saturday and Sunday at the Masters. What's between the ears? Are you ready for that? Yeah. Wolf ready to be a number one goalie in Asker, Canada? Askarov in Nashville. Yeah, I guess that's different in right? Canada, yeah. Especially in Canada. So uh, that, that to me, you got to just start the conversation in Calgary with, are you going to keep Markstrom around for the next couple of years? Mm. Oh, do you hear his? Do you want to knock on the door? Traded? If he you think you can, happy. if you think you can tweak this thing in Calgary and get them back in, you can't get rid of Markstrom. Mm -hmm. um, quickly, speaking of Calgary, mm -hmm. I went on Calgary radio today with my boy George Russick, and just to quickly talk about the Masters went on for ten minutes or so. Completely sidetracked me and went, "Hey, Mike Vernon's in studio. Welcome. Want to say hi to Mike Vernon, Hall of Famer?" I was like, "Sure, hi." Bernie, how are you? And he said, and who are you? He interviewed me for <laughs> 10 minutes about no. the Masters. He oh asked me like God. four questions I about the Masters. Hall of this. Famer yes, man. is asking yes. you questions. Yeah, he's like, what do you think of that Hoygaard? This is where, the, this, is, this, is, this is where, 
It's a stupid business. This I, is where it's a real... Can we have a Tortorella, please? <laughs> it's, just a dumb it's a dumb league. It's a I dumb couldn't believe media it. world. And we had some great conversations. Me no. and Bernie were best buds by the end of the interview. Couldn't gonna, believe am it. Am I going to have to That's download awesome. this? Yeah, if you want. It's Rustic, a dumb league. Rustic would really appreciate it if you did. Thank Quickly, you. before we go. Yes. Can you name... Uh, 108 different players have scored a goal on Sidney Crosby's assists. You got to 1,000. Can you name the top five? The uh, most goals off so Sydney Malkin, assists. Malkin, number one. Latang. Yep, he, he's number he four. Uh, Kunitz, number three. Good one. Gensel, number two. Wow, Isn't we're pretty any? good. Number Hilda? five and number five. Number five. Is this one tricky? Still on the team. Still on Pittsburgh. Still on the team. Uh, who else is good on that? You protect team? this your car against Rust? this in the winter. Yeah, Rust. Brian Rust. Yeah, Rust. there you go. Oh, yeah. Okay, we, we we were good there for a while. If you go to Sportsnet stats, they retweeted it from the the lead, the Penguins PR. Yeah. It's an awesome list. Yeah. Like Mario Lemieux has one goal off a no off a way. Sydney Crosby assist. Yeah, That's you know, great. looking at this, like Andre Waugh has one with a sit assist. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Lemieux and it's, Andre Waugh. So it's I, a really cool list to look. I, through. I did mention Rod Brindamore. I hear he's really close to signing a new contract. Really? Yeah. And he is the hurricane, went, and it won't be it won't be a contract that'll make him the highest paid in the league, but it won't put him in the bottom, which he's been at for the last well, little I mean, while. Which is a Jack obscene. Adams but conversation. One, one of the here. delays, and this is so Rod Brendamore. One of the delays in in this is ma- he wants to make sure there's people around him that are looked after, mm-hmm. and and <laughs> getting new contracts as well. I so, thought you meant his spotters at the gym. They were around. No, no. <laughs> No. <laughs> he wants people around him in case he drops the weights so, he carries around. He doesn't envision himself coaching anywhere else but no. Carolina. I mean, he has a family there, right? I think he even coaches his son's peewee team yeah. when he when he can. So, yeah, he seems like he's embedded there. Not a guy who so much desires to be an NHL head coach as the coach of the Carolina Hurricanes. So, very cool. Yeah. They have an identity. They have success. It only makes sense. Can uh, I, oh, sorry. Just going to say that uh, this up. segment of Real Kipper and Born was brought to you by Hyundai. The 2024 Santa Fe Hybrid NHL Edition is made for those who drive hockey. Only 500 available, fellas. So order yours today. Hockey car. Hockey car. Nice job, Sammy. Uh, I, I want to give out, uh, and I want to do this every Friday, but I, I forget because, mm, you know, I've had concussions. Oh. Mm. Uh, Nicholas Blackmore here at Sportsnet always puts together a best of real Kipper and Bourne. Yeah, it's awesome. Saturday mornings. Yeah. So I just wanted to give him a, a shout out. Yeah, it's very jarring. Sometimes I'm in the car at that time. I, w- I just turn on the radio. I'm like, oh my God. Oh God, it's me. It's, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible. Well, it gives you a break from Googling yourself. <laughs> oh yeah, that's my favorite thing to do. As you know, as you know. Masters Kippy. weekend, NHL final weekend. This is, we're into the sports sweet spot of the calendar. So, uh, Couple things. Monday, Matthews. Does he have seventy when we sit down on Monday? No, no, and it's going to be drama. About okay, what to do next. we did a, we did a, we did a leaf edition about a month and a half ago, and we were asked what number he ends up with, mm. and it was over under seventy. Was it? Yeah, and I said sixty nine. Great. Yep, oh. Thanks. <laughs> How about you? Do you remember your answer? <laughs> I think I might have been right there. I mean, I don't think I said, I definitely wouldn't have said over 70 because I never saw it. And it was based off of like, make sure that it doesn't become like this obsession for two weeks. Boys, we're sitting here on Monday talking about how he's the first guy since Solani and McGillany to do it. Wow. Bold proclamation. And both those guys. Detroit needs this game. They're going to be all over him. And both those guys that year got knocked out in the first round. Really? Is that true? Oh, you're such. That's the last thing you're going to say to me on a Friday. Yeah. Enjoy Lord. your weekend. Hey, what? homework for you. Look oh, it up. I, oh, you don't even know if it's true. <laughs> oh, I, think, I I do believe. I do believe it's true. All right. Derek Brandeo, we're all good, buddy. Sammy got her in. Have a great weekend, everybody. Enjoy your games as the picture gets clearer to the National Hockey League Stanley Cup playoffs. If you get a chance, give us a, a rating and review. Download us. And we're back Monday on The Real Kipper and Bourne Show.